Hey, F and True followers, JC Styles here. Brian Crazy. And this is our TNA Impact review for 3-24-2011. That is correct. TNA just went off the air. I do have to say the beginning of the show was... Kind of slow? Slow and just odd. I mean, we see Anderson come out with uh, his... I guess it was his math teacher yeah. from what the lesson seemed like. And I guess his math teacher was a hornball and school and dissed Anderson and said he was gay mm -hmm. so he could try to back it to some chick that was in the class. Um, okay? I guess. What, what does this have to do with anything? Uh, other than being maybe slightly funny, which I guess talking about it is slightly funny, but actually watching it really wasn't that no. funny. Um, what's your take? Uh, actually, to be honest, I missed like the first ten minutes of Impact because I was actually oh, so uh, in the middle of recording in the middle of recording the uh, WWF Superstars compared to WWE Superstars, so that should be up by tomorrow. It's gonna take like an hour to upload because I have it the best quality ever. Uh, then we move into Hogan and Bischoff come out, and then um, you know basically Hogan talks about how he offered Anderson basically the easy way out the week before, and Anderson didn't want to take it. And, you know, RVD gets involved, and then we see RVD versus Anderson later in the night for the number one contender. Um, after that, we move into a knockouts competition. We see Tara versus Mickey James. Um, they went back went for a cigarette, right? No, I watched the match. Oh. Um, well, the, uh, let's, you know, the promo it was kind of funny because we seen RVD come out, and, or no, we saw Mr. Anderson come out. It was basically uh, saying, RVD, he's like, yeah, RVD, he's like, yeah. And then yeah, then I think, I don't know if I was hearing things, or did Hulk Hogan actually refer to RVD as DVR? He did refer to him as DVR. And uh, then we see kind of like RVD come out and basically say, you know, you promised me when I signed with TNA that I could be myself, and I can ha do what I want, and I want to be the whole effing show, and basically pretty much sums it really up to the whole promo. Well, I mean, yeah, that sums up that promo, and then you see a little bit later on in the night. I don't know exactly between which segment. I didn't write it down on my little sheet here, but um, we run into a segment where you see RVD backstage and Hogan's just, you know, feeding them the bullshit all day long. Oh, yeah, I'm behind you. Oh, yeah, this, that, and the yeah. other. And, you know, RVD must, you know, just get around the corner, and Hogan starts laughing like a fucking madman yeah. that, you know, just found, like, the stash of gold hidden under the also, rock. Also, we saw Sting come out and say that the network said that they wanted him to be the special guest enforcer. The network. The network. Now, that was the best thing. Anderson goes, I, what does this show up on your caller ID? Who's, who is the network? Hmm, can we say Dixie Carter, maybe? No, 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 no. But the best shit about it is, Anderson goes to Sting, uh, one of the backstage segments. He goes, now, what shows up on your caller ID? And he goes, they're simply just the network. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that whole angle is... You know what it reminds me of? It's like, remember when the, I mean, the network's gotten involved in several wrestling angles over the years. I remember... Uh, when WWE parried, uh, parodied the whole network angle with the right to censor the parents' television yeah. council. And I remember, wasn't there some, like, ominous network voice in WCW at some point? I know there was. I don't know. I don't remember. I think there was. I don't remember off the top of my head. We'll look into it. Um, the knockouts so, match? Yeah, we see Mickey James defeat Tara. And then post-match, we see Queen Bee herself, Madison Rain, come down to the ramp and uh, basically stare a hole through Mickey. You guys know at lockdown, it is going to be the Knockouts Championship versus Mickey James's hair. So, the way I see it, I think Mickey's going to win. Well, actually, I was reading online that Mickey James is actually injured. Uh, she is injured. Um, she has a separated shoulder, but there is a lot of speculation that she will work lockdown. She okay. won't work the impact tapings. If she works, if she does, if she doesn't work the impact tapings and she works lockdown, I have a feeling that we're not going to see her win the title. Well, she's getting appalled. So, <laughs> I don't know how many ways around that one, man. They kind of Sometimes they make these stipulations, and then people get hurt, and then they, they there's no way out. Either that, or they, they, don't, they just pull, pull out of the match. They don't do the match. They could. They, that is feasible, but the biggest one of the biggest pay-per-views of the year, they need it stacked. They do. <laughs> <laughs> I, like I said, I mean, I don't think that they need a knockouts match on a pay-per-view, or a Divas match. Well, I think the women deserve a chance to shine. Um, then we see Okada defeat the Pope by DQ after Pope removes his glove and attacks Okada with the bare knuckles that had his rings on it. Then we see Joe come out and basically scare the Pope off. 
like we've seen week in and week out. I don't know what's going on with this storyline. It's starting to get fucking boring. It's been boring for weeks. I mean, I don't know. I mean, this whole storyline, they, they passed up Joe to be taking the battle against the mortal to have him feud with the Pope. I don't... I don't know. I don't get him. Then we see uh, Ric Flair come out with Fortune. Well, excuse me. We see Ric Flair come out to feud with Fortune. We see him uh, accompanied to the ring by Matt Hardy and Bully Ray. Um, really? Ric Flair? These are the best two guys you can get? Ric Flair and Bully Ray? And Matt Hardy and Jeff Hardy? But that's the best guys you can get. Yeah. I mean, would you think... I mean, I'm sorry. I, I'm a huge supporter of TNA. But not to, you know, throw the Vince thing in there. But do you think Vince would ever let that fucking happen? Hell no. Well, then again, they let DX run rampant for almost a whole year. In yeah, 2000 with the McMahon Helmsley era. Dude. He let DX drive a fucking tank up to WCW's fucking uh, That was door. funny, though. Yeah, but he let DX do whatever they needed to to crush fucking the opposition. Because DX sold. I don't know. It's what puts butts in the seats. I think uh, Shivani said it best. I don't don't care what Shivani said. But anyway. Why don't you care what Shivani said? I don't know. One, one of the gra greatest wrestling commentators ever. But um, not the greatest wrestling commentator no, we ever. We all know the greatest commentator is Jerry the King because he likes puppies. Uh, the greatest wrestling commentator ever was probably the team of Bobby the Brain, Heenan, and Grill not soon. Or Vince McMahon and... Um, Jesse and Body Ventura. Or you could say Jim Ross and uh, Jerry Lawler. Or, you know what, to be honest, I enjoyed Mike today and Don West just fine. I thought they did a fine job on TNA for, you know what, the first. Yeah, but then if it wasn't, if they didn't give it to Don West, then we wouldn't have the pit, let the pigeons lose quotes. True. I do so. like Taz. Taz did, Taz did a great job on uh, SmackDown. And, uh, didn't, that, didn't that segment uh, ba break out into a huge brawl with the returning Abyss? Yes, Abyss did return. That is the big news of the night. Abyss came back. He had a slightly different look. He cleared the House of Fortune. You know, he stood with his mortal brothers. And at lockdown, we are going to see Fortune versus uh, Hardy, Bully Ray, and Abyss. So. At least Ric Flair's not in there with his 80 year old self with no shirt. And his man titties. <laughs> hey, just because... Hey, Flair, there's no law. Put a shirt on. It's in true wrestling. JC from F and True Wrestling. Brian from F and True Wrestling. Ric Flair is retire. a wrestling god. Still god. needs to retire. Even guys need to retire. Ric Flair... Do you think... And the dude, light went out again. Dude, dude Ric Flair oh, okay. is like classy Freddie Blassie. They can wheel his ass out to the ring and he's still uh, worthy of seeing you know what, Ric Flair, keep doing what you do, brother. I have more respect for you than ever. And, uh, you know, keep living life. Keep living it strong. Keep doing what you got to do. Are you picking your ass while I'm talking about no, Ric Flair? I'm scratching my ass. There's a difference. If you want me to pick my ass, I can pick my ass if you want me to. Would you like the pencil? No. Uh, I don't like putting things in my ass. Okay, <laughs> so we have, uh... Oh, okay, guys. We're we had Hernandez, Rosita, and... Rosita and Sarita? Yes, Hernandez, Sarita, and the conveniently named Rosita. With Anarchy? No, An Esteban. Esteban, Arnarchy, what, what, what's the name of their group? Arnarchy, Arnarchy? No, 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 the name of their group is uh, Mexican-American. Oh, whatever. Um, I think they're trying to recreate LAX... So uh, then we we see basically RVD and Anderson, and we see the sickest bump probably of the night would probably be we see the mic check into the ring post. Yes, and then actually post match, I mean RVD, RVD sells it. Yeah, RVD was declared the number one contender, so he will be facing Sting at Lockdown. But then when he says, "Oh, you got a match against Sting," he's like, "I got a match right now." I mean, he sold it so fucking good. He didn't. Even or maybe he really did get a concussion. Maybe he did get his fucking. His bell rung. He could have, but I think he. Was I mean, let me let me, let me um let me give you a mic check into this steel pole. I mean, the house will probably collapse, but let's see how yeah, you feel. Yeah, yeah, but I, I I I don't know. I don't think they would have like. I think they would have carted him off to the hospital if he really was seeing stars. But um, post match, you never know what happens until you get checked out. Right? True, true, true. I mean, they could have had a trainer going over to him while they captured him with a oh, camera. Oh, also, while we're doing this video, um, just give out give you know. A lot of people are always asking us, how do we get views on our videos? So, it's all about timing and proper titleization of your videos. Well, not even, I mean, even uh, if you can get a little following, I mean, even if you cannot get the video out to the day or two following, it's that you have to provide content that's relevant. 
I mean, if uh, just to you know help out some of the younger guys out there. I mean, if you're gonna go over, to, uh, say, if you're gonna review a pay-per-view that happened two months ago, there's a likelihood that a lot of people might not be looking for that information yeah. because so much has happened in the WWE or TNA universes since it's happened. But say uh, TNA went off the you know the air half an hour, 45 minutes ago, and we're out here banging out a review. We're gonna upload this. It's gonna be there for the guys that have not seen the show, and they'll get to check out uh, what we have to say, and also just a recap of the uh, night's happenings. And uh, another thing, like JC said, tags are very crucial. And your tags, just put in simple things. You know, you can put in uh, separate everything with a comma and a space. So say this video, TNA comma space impact comma space review comma space uh, blah 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 you know review results put in the date and put in the date in a couple different fashions with slashes with dots this kind of stuff helps I, mean, I kid you not and um and then title title's really not that uh, I mean the main title of the video is important the description you know put in some information tell people about some stuff links whatever you want to do it's, yeah. your, it's your video be creative but um you know we just want to help some of you guys out and uh, we are still looking for, uh, you know, uh, channels to plug, people to, you know, help. Uh, so, a uh, good question now, uh, Mr. I'm Wider Machine to me, what's going on with the F and True Click? The F and True Click, it has uh, been an idea that uh, me and JC have been putting we together. We have, like, what, five people already in there? We have five people already interested, and we're hoping to get some more. This is going to be our way to help out some people, uh, help, uh, you know, start to promote a group of people kind of under the F and True banner, and, uh, you know, start to create a... Uh, you know, a force with, yeah, well, not just a falling. This is a force to be reckoned with within the YWC. Uh, it's going to be, uh, you know, multiple people aligned with similar views that will bring news content and uh, information like nobody has before. Like I said, I want to uh, bring in, you know, these guys under the F and True umbrella and create, you know, basically like a super group of, you know, wrestling gurus that will, uh, you know, hopefully change the landscape of what we do here in the YWC. Also, uh, me and Brian have been throwing out the I bouncing around the ideas of making Effing True Wrestling uh, shirts. Yes. Uh, YouTube shirts. Um, we've also... Uh, We're just working on uh, pricing. We're looking on, you know, high quality material to make uh, have the shirts made out of. Yes. We don't want to, uh, you know, do anything second rate for you, our fans. Uh, and pretty much, basically, uh, stay tuned to, for our future videos. I just placed the order for new two, two new WWE shirts. I will not, uh, disclose them, disclose what I purchased, because I want you guys to, uh, see them, uh, uh, the day I unbox them. Yep, fans will get to see them firsthand as they're unboxed. That sounds pretty exciting. And to give a quick rundown of Impact, Abyss returned, um... And I guess, as it stands, RVD is the number one contender, but depending on this quote-unquote concussion syndrome, um, are we going to see, yet again, no number one contender? Because, I mean, to be honest, RVD would be a perfect person to help lead Sting in the ring. Sting, you know, he is getting up there in age, and he even admits it himself. He needs a good technical wrestler to help lead him in the ring. You know, and putting the belt on Sting was a stopgap measure because of, you know, the situation with Jeff Hardy. Yeah, I mean, I, I, there, I could, there's a lot of TNA wrestlers, uh, wrestlers in the TNA locker room, I should say, that can have a put, that could put on a good match with Sting. Well, I'm talking this about the current, you got to fit into the current storyline. And right now, I mean, they can easily pull out a couple of names and see if they're, like, worthy enough of having a number one contender spot. I mean, just keeping the, 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 the title picture around Anderson and RVD, I mean, I don't know, it's a very narrow scope, I do agree, I wish they would kind of broaden the title picture, like I've said in uh, past weeks, I would like to see more of the uh, TNA originals, and even people that have come over to TNA in recent years kind of have a, more of a chance to shine, I think, uh, you know, with Jeff Jarrett possibly being out, this could be a great angle uh, to get Kurt Angle, funny enough, uh, back, you know, into the title picture, get AJ back into, well, AJ's out currently, but get AJ back into the title picture, um, you know, this, that, and the other, um, so, you know, this is, uh, you know, basically, I guess, pretty much what we have for Impact, yeah. right? So, um, there was, they haven't announced anything for lockdown with the exception of the, uh, Rick, the Bully Ray and all those guys' matches. Well, um, well, we, uh, potentially had the main event. We have yeah. Sting versus, uh, RVD, RVD and then we RVD. have, uh, Madison versus Mickey, and then we have, uh, I think we're gonna see... King King versus Beer Money for the tag belts. I'm not positive at this point, but after the blowout last week, 
because remember the whole, you know, they went to go shake hands and there was the blowout yeah. and kind of like the similar blowout they had this week. So, um, oh, so you mean not the blowout like Paul, DJ Paul D from the Jersey Shirts blowout? Was his little throw? <laughs> well, guys, uh, this is it. This is a wrap for tonight. Oh, uh, one last piece of information. Do got to throw this in there, guys, before we close out this video. Scott Steiner's contract is going to be coming up shortly. Uh, we don't know if it's going to be resigned yet. When we find that out, we will let you know. But uh, like JC was saying, I'll let him finish it off. Uh, so, guys, we'll see you uh, tomorrow night for a SmackDown review. I heard some interesting stuff is going to be happening. And, uh... That's a wrap. Yeah. And just remember, I hope you uh, guys enjoyed what you saw. And please subscribe if you already have. Thanks.